everyone. My name is Jonathan Silva. Welcome into another video here on YouTube, taking a look at how we can use Power Automate from Microsoft to just generally make our lives easier and everything we like to do just a little bit faster. For this video, we're gonna look at how we can send an email to Office 365 groups or a team to be able to send that email all at once without having an apply to each action so each person gets their own email instead everybody's part of the same email this time so let's jump into our demo example here to take a look at how exactly we can set that up so the first action we're going to take here is going to add a new step and we're just going to go ahead and, and get the the groups that we want to use here in this case we just want to use one single group so i'm going to go ahead and choose groups here within our office 365 groups we're gonna go ahead in this case, start off by listing group members. That's gonna be our first action here. And then we're gonna go ahead and find the group that we want to call to uh, for this case. Now I do have a group that I'm gonna use here. This is our Power Platform training team. And then from here, if I wanted to use this group, say send an email to all the members of the group, I can go ahead and add an, an action here for send an email and we can choose a quick email here. Now what you'll notice is in the to field, if I wanna add dynamic content to send an email to all of the members of that group, I can go ahead and choose that mail here for our dynamic content. But you will notice that it will automatically create an apply to each loop for this case. Now the reason for that apply to each loop getting created is because of the value list of items that's automatically added. When we're using the list group members action, because we can have multiple members of that group, for every single one of them, if we're gonna send an email, it's gonna add an, a, a loop to it, so each and every single person gets their own email. Right? It's gonna loop over this array that's created in order to apply the same logic to each and every action there, Okay, each every row or item on that array. Well, in this case, we don't really want that. We don't want it where every single person's getting a different email. I like it so everybody's getting the same email. Like maybe if it's once a week on a schedule to you know welcome to some new project or ask them for their lunch orders or whatever it might be, right? We wanna send it out to everybody all in the same thread so it's easier to organize from there. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete our apply to each loop in this case. And instead, we're gonna go ahead and add in a new step here for a select. The select data operation allows us to work with an array quite easily and then map a value. We can choose what the key we want and then the value to be able to display that later on. In this case, we're gonna go ahead and choose in our from section here to pass through our array, our value in this case, or in all other ways you'll see value list of items. And then for the mapping section here, instead of one single value, what we'll do is we're gonna add our switch over here to, to text mode. And then once we switch to text mode, we can pass in all of the user email addresses all at once right here. Now, what we can do is go ahead and save this and, and give it a test to see how they're being returned in the list life structure, like an array um, that we are expecting from this select data operation. So I'm gonna choose test, we're gonna do a manual test, go ahead and run our flow and take a look at how they get returned. So we have our listing of our group members, you can see from our team, from our ID there. We are gonna choose our select, which passes through the input, takes out the different names and passes it, and there it is we now have our email addresses all together there in that list-like structure. Well, now if you think about it, if I want to send an email, I can go ahead and add that in and, and that, that new output here from our select to send it to each and every person. So we can choose here to send an email. And let's try this again. Now, what you will expect is, well, because they're all in a list that we should have different values, but you'll notice is we're getting the same thing. Well, that's because within this select, we're not being able to parse out each individual email here to be able to send all, all across one line within our two field. What we need to do is change the way that the, the data is being displayed here from the select in order to pass that through properly through our Outlook. As you know, if you wanna use multiple email addresses within a, a two field in Outlook, you need to separate those email addresses, separate those values with a semicolon. 
Well, luckily for us, there are two different ways for us to do that. The first way that we can go ahead and, and separate those, uh, those different values is by adding in another data operation. We can just go to our data operations here and see all of them. We have the join operation. What the join operation does, and there it is right there, will allow us to join together our array to be able to see the different values all together. So if we look at our array here, I wanna from our output, from our select, right, the entire array there, how do I wanna join the separate values within it? Well, I wanna join them with a semicolon. So now that produces a separated list here, or delimiter that we can pass through so it properly shows up within our to field of our email address. So now if I select a new step here, instead of actually sending the email, well, let's, let's go ahead and take a look at sending the email anyway, how it, how it shows up. If I want to send that email, what I can now do is take the output of our join, there's our output right there. And you'll notice now it's actually separating it out and we can actually pass through the output without seeing an apply to each loop. To show that even easier here, what we can do is we could just do a quick test, right? I'm not gonna actually send this email because I don't think everybody wants to see it. But if we want to, we can add in a, a compose to be able to see exactly how the data is being returned there. And we'll go ahead and just simply put the, the output from our join to be able to see that. So we do know it shows up here in our send an email. It's not adding in our apply to each. I can add in the test here as well, right? It's staying just like that if we want um, to be able to send that, that simple email. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that real quick because I don't think they wanna see that, but we can go ahead and hit save here and test that and let's see how that how that join works within our compose. So as we take a look at the, the output that's being provided. So let's take a look at this. Now we go from our select as we already looked at, we are separated by a comma here within our array. If we go to our join, what you're now gonna see within the join is we have the same input from the select, but now each of those are on one line separated by a semicolon. So you can see each email address getting a semicolon separated there. There's our delimiter. And now if I put that inside of a compose, you can see that's exactly what we're returning. This is what would actually show up in the to field of our email, which is perfect for what we wanna see. Now that's one way for us to do this using the select date operation and our join. Now there is one other way for us to do this and the other way is if I'm gonna add in a parallel branch just to see the second option is, well, if we want to go ahead and add this um, as, a, as another way, technically the join data operation is actually an expression that we could use as well within Power Automate. So if I just add in another compose here instead of sending that email out, actually, I can come in here and we can do our expression here on the side and there is an expression for join. Now, if I use the join expression, well, now I can go ahead and choose the dynamic content produced from that select here. And I can say, I want to join together the select, the output from that select, and I want to pass them through with our delimiter, in this case, and we're gonna use a semicolon. So now, this join expression is identical to how our join action is working. Both of these are working the exact same way in order for us to add that delimiter into that array so it can be passed through all in one line without having to use the apply to each. So now I can go ahead and, and add that in here. We have our compose there, there's our join. And guess what, what I can do here on this parallel branch if I wanted to, I can send that email just to show you that it doesn't add that apply to each. We can go ahead and pass through our output here at our dynamic content. There it is, outputs there. Again, no apply to each, making this very, very simple for us to be able to use in the getting the exact result we wanna see. To so take a little quick test here and see what that output provides us within this Compose. We'll do one last test here and you'll, you'll see that we are gonna get that um, semicolon delimiter there to separate each of the values to get everything exactly what we wanna see. So let's go ahead and run that flow one more time and let's compare the results on either side. Here's our Compose there. That's giving us the same output as our Compose here. 
right? We're getting the exact same items here, getting to it in two different ways, but still using join to get us to that road. Now, it wouldn't be possible without the select data operation, but we are now in a spot here where we can go ahead and send this email, send one email out to the entire team, one email out to the entire Office 365 group, so we can have that single thread for everybody to reply to if we needed to there. So this is one great example that we can use. In fact, something we use here on a, in a weekly basis to make sure everybody's part of the same um, thread of emails to, to keep everybody in the loop of new actions or new projects or things that are happening all the time at the office. I want to thank you for joining me once again here, uh, working with Power Automate, this time specifically being able to work with some of our data operations to make the way that we structure our emails a lot easier, a lot um, more realistic to what we'd like to have. And it's just another way for us to be able to use Power Automate to help us make our lives just a bit easier. Stay tuned for some more of our videos coming out in the next few days and next few weeks. And hopefully you can get there and drop a like and hit that subscribe button. Continue to coming back to us here at Pragmatic Works for all of your power platform needs. Mm -hmm.